Hello, and welcome to Dartmouth. This is a podcast where we explore some of the strange, peculiar, and often darker stories that surround the histories of Chibuktuk in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. My name is Jess, and in this episode, Joanne and Shannon discuss murder. Trigger warning. Domestic violence. Links for support can be found in the description box below. Hello, I'm Shannon Baxter. I am the collections manager here at the Dartmouth Heritage Museum. And today, I'm going to be talking about the murder of Mary Russell. So this takes place in September of 1798. And um, around this time, there was actually a big storm that passed through uh, Nova Scotia, and particularly Dartmouth. So Mary Russell and some of her friends uh, were first sort of surveying the damage of the aftermath of the storm. And afterwards, were, she was walking home with some friends. Mary, also known as Polly, was noted to, to be escorted home by a William Bell, who was an employee of the, at the time called Lower Ferry, also known as Bell's Ferry, at the end of Old Ferry Road. Um, so this wouldn't have been a problem unless a Thomas Bambridge didn't hear about it. Um, in the writings we have of this story, he is note of becoming extremely jealous of seeing his sweetheart being walked or hearing that his sweetheart is being walked home by another man and just became totally extremely jealous of the news. But apparently also at the time, um, Mary was talking about how she was so glad she was doing this excursion without this annoying guy like overbearing her. So I'm like, were they actually courting or was it sort of the, you know, he was hoping she would go out with him and she was like, I'm already getting bad vibes from this guy. And fortunately, she proved to be right. So uh, later that night, she was at home with her mother, her sister, her father, Nathaniel Russell, and two of his friends, Moses Pitcher and John Felon. And it was late in the evening and suddenly there was like an aggressive knock at the door and Thomas Bambridge just bust inside apparently just through like three entrance ways, which makes you wonder just how big their house was. It doesn't really go into that much detail. And he demanded to talk to Mary privately. Mary, just sensing that he was not happy, was like, no, I'm not going to talk to you alone. But he managed to at least get her to one part of the house while her mother was also there. And he had a knife concealed. And then he unfortunately stabbed and killed her and in some of the writings both in mary lawson's history of uh the township of dartmouth apparently there's her mother exclaimed like you killed my child whereas nathaniel and his two friends uh tackled thomas because he was going to then stab himself in a very dramatic matter to make things even worse and then of course he was stopped and then of course, tried and convicted of the blatant murder of this poor Mary Russell. And so she is buried at Woodlawn Church Cemetery, but her grave, unfortunately, is unknown of its exact location, which is interesting to me because this all took place around Russell Lake in Dartmouth. Uh, Dartmouth is known as the City of Lakes because it has a series of lakes, and this family uh, lent the name to this particular one, which again, makes me wonder of just how close they were to um, the, f- the f- Bell Ferry at the beginning of the story, because that seems like quite the walk, because that's basically all the way up to Woodlawn. But still, um, anyway, that was is the tragic story of Mary Russell, um, of... Uh, the Woodlawn area and being murdered by her lover or just a very jealous man who thought they were sweethearts. It's very unclear, frankly, from the notes we do have for uh, this particular tragic tale. 
And it's a story that still goes on today and is basically timeless. The abusive relationships between people and people who claim ownership over another person and the extreme jealousy and that sort of thing to be so jealous that another gentleman was walking his girlfriend, uh, whatever, home for an evening. A normal person might think, oh, thank you for walking her home and making sure she got home safely. But instead, jealousy arose. Yeah, which is so ex- so tragic and so extreme. And I can only imagine how William felt after that. It's like, I was just walking her home and then hearing like, oh, she was murdered. Like, I can only imagine like the guilt is like, there was nothing going on. Like, again, totally normal, especially after a storm. So you think there might be a lot of debris in the area of like, just making sure she was safely taken home. Like, anyway. So. Right. And in her own house with her parents present. Yeah, like this was clearly, for lack of a better word, a crime of passion because he clearly did not think this through. This was all fueled by jealousy and this possessive mindset, which is so sad. And like you said, there's unfortunately a lot. You can look across history and see these sort of tales of, you know, jealous lovers lashing out and it's like people just need to sort of calm down and you know not blow up into these jealous rages it's so it only leads to tragedy and sadness so right and i think we should share some places where you can go for help if you do feel like you're in an abusive relationship or you do need to talk to somebody Uh, for your own safety. Absolutely. Well, thank you again for listening into our podcast. Um, While it is a sadder story today, and like we said, we will list some resources for those who feel they need some help or support. And um, we hope you'll join us next time for another story from Dartmouth's history.